This is Eddie Hearn, Matchroom Boxing. You are watching Sporting Icons. You don't need to be anywhere else. Okay, so it's kind of typical really that I upload a video saying how there's 24 hours left for Dillian White versus Tyson Fury, their teams, to make a deal before it goes to purse bid. So as of this video, until tomorrow, Tuesday. As soon as I upload it, Eddie Hearn does an interview with Five Live. It's a radio station, boxing podcast via the BBC, where he says, actually, no, it's now going to be changed until Friday. So another extension. Now, I really wish that Eddie Hearn, Dylan White, Tyson Fury, Frank Warren, Bob Aaron would at least consult me just to make sure I'm not, I'm not about to upload videos. So, you know, just to make sure that I'm not wasting time before they uh, go onto podcasts and start changing things around. I really wish that they would. Um, now, that's a joke, by the way, because there's going to be some Fury fan to get out there and sport and I can't think you should be consulted. No, I don't. Um, anyway, it's what Eddie Hearn had to say about that. And of course, a potential fight date for Tyson Fury and Dillian White. People keep talking about March days. That's starting to look unrealistic for a fight of this magnitude. Either March, April, early May, potentially. This is the window for the fight. Depends on what happens this week. There are so many conversations going on behind the scenes right now. Something could turn at any moment. You're talking about a lot of money. A difference of 25%. The normal split for any mandatory challenger is a lot more than the 80-20 that's been offered. The normal split for an interim champion is up to 45%. So that's where 25% comes in. We feel in terms of the commercial value of Dillian White, and the time he's had to wait, 80-20, is quite ridiculous, really. It looks like Dillian White will definitely get his shot at the WBC title, but we have to fight for his rights to make sure it's fair. We're not going to stand in the way of the fight. Eddie Hearn's statement. So basically, what he said there is tied up. Whether it's 80-20 or another percentage, the fight's going to happen anyway. Dillian White versus Tyson Fury. And yes, I am saying Dillian White versus Tyson Fury as per the title, of the previous video where I said Dillian White versus Tyson Fury. I'm fishing. <laughs> I'm fishing. Anyway, now, extended date again for a second time. We know that a sanctioned body would usually do that when both parties for the relevant fighters, in this case Fury and Dillian White, will let the sanctioned body know, in this case WBC, and say things like, well, we could actually have a deal here. We just need a few more days to try and get the deal over the line to save going to purse bid. And under, under most circumstances, the sanctioning body will, of course, allow that to happen. Because obviously, they, they don't want to go to purse bid. They'd rather people just work out the terms. It's far easier that way. Um, but it could just be that the WBC have just extended it just to be difficult because of the whole arbitration situation. They're putting in dates that they know fine well can't get there. So it could just be that, who knows. But as far as the 80-20 split and the interim champion get up to 45%, you see, I've said this so many times, even before Eddie Hearn started talking about this one, the 45%, I still get comments now saying, well, Sporting Archives, why are you lying for? It's not up to 45%. These are old rules. Yada, yada. Well, I think Eddie Hearn knows a lot more about what the split should be than you do, right? more than what I do. So... If you want to say that I'm lying or I'm wrong, fine, no problem. Go tell Eddie Hearn he's lying and he's wrong. Good luck with that one. But hopefully, hopefully they get this fight done. Now, as far as the date is concerned with the fight, is it more realistic to happen in April or May? As he says there, because of the potential revenue that this fight could bring in, the size of this fight, obviously it's going to be a stadium fight. You couldn't put Dean White versus Tyson Fury in the O2 Arena. You just couldn't do it. It would have to be a stadium because there'll be so much demand to watch this fight. It makes more sense to do it that way. Why wouldn't you want to bring in as much revenue as you possibly can? The pay-per-views are going to go through the roof for this one. Of course, you need as much time to plan this as possible. Of course, you, I mean, you, you need to give the fans as much notice as possible. The fighters as much notice as possible for their camp. And of course, book the stadium and all that kind of good stuff. But... If nothing was to happen between now and Friday, again, I mean, Eddie Hearn, he still believes that it will go to purse bid. But are they just going to keep on delaying it and delaying it and delaying it? Because to be honest with you, I'm kind of getting bored of it. I'm like a dog chasing his own tail sometimes with it. I don't know exactly what 
the plan is. I don't know what the time scale is as to when the arbitrator is going to make a ruling. Is it going to be March, like Frank Warren said? Is Tyson Fury going to go have his WWE fight again? Is he going to go fight this um, fellow from the UFC, this Francis Ngannou guy? Is he going to go fight, um, as per another article that's, that's in, come out this morning, which I haven't done a video on, maybe Robert Helene's or Manuel Char? I mean, what's that about? Absolute jokes. Absolute joke. Fury, go do whatever you're going to do, but in the boxing ring, you fight your mandatory challenger. I know that's not a word that you're familiar with, although you were when you were mandatory challenger for Vladimir Klitschko, but how do you like it if Vladimir Klitschko started messing about with you, the way that you're doing with Dillian White. You're arguing over splits of money when you're a Spartan, you don't care about money. Good one, who believes that? But hopefully they get this fight done. And as you said there, a lot of talks are ongoing behind the scenes right now and something could turn at any moment. Well, that'd be great. Bob Barron did say a few days ago that everybody should just stop messing about, in other words, admitting that he's been messing about, and just come to the table and make a real deal get his fight done bob Aaron don't want this to go to purse but i think eddie hearn does i think he does i think that he feels pretty confident that nobody can match his offer because ultimately to say 20 percent is an insult isn't it it is an insult a standard defense is not usually uh 20 it's usually around that kind of figure but a mandatory challenger you're talking 25 30 percent with the wbc it's 30 percent Dylan White is mandatory challenger and interim champion, which goes up to 45%. So the number should be between 30 and 45. I know some people have been saying, he's not interim champion, what are you talking about? He lost to Povetkin. He got it back in a rematch, Numpty. I mean, don't these people follow boxing? I don't, I don't know. People will drop comments without actually knowing anything, acting like some kind of damn expert. Listen, I am an expert, but I kind of know what I'm talking about. If I don't know what I'm talking about, I won't talk about it. That's pretty much how I am. But... Regardless of the issues, and the reason that there is issues as well, as a side note as well, between WBC and Dillian White, is because the WBC have allowed, say, former champion Deontay Wilder to freeze out Dillian White. Dillian White has been number one for the longest time. It's been absolutely ridiculous. And people can say how he fought Rebass, people can say how he fought uh, Chisora again, people say how he fought um, Povetkin twice and whatever else. Yes, of course, he did take a loss to Povetkin, but he shouldn't have been in any of those fights. Because he should have already had his world title shot. And people like me wouldn't be talking about Dylan White being number one for X amount of time. The WBC are messing him about and yada, yada, yada. I would have had to do hundreds of videos on this situation if the WBC treat Dylan White the same way as they treat everybody else. That's all we're asking for. Fairness. That's it. Not asking for anything more than what's owed. Tyson Fury versus Dylan White is a mega fight. It's a stadium fight. Personally, I think that... I mean, ultimately, as Eddie Hearn finished off that conversation there with, he says that it's not going to get in the way of the fight. So no matter what the split's going to be, whether it's 80, 20 or another number, the fight's going to happen. There's no way around it. It's going to happen. It's just that Dylan would like to get more money. And why wouldn't he? Wouldn't you if he's in his situation? Especially as mandatory challengers get 30% and onwards. So why shouldn't he? Especially when Tyson Fury couldn't fight anybody else outside of Joshua in a stadium. Good luck trying to fight Manuel Char, Robert Helenius in the stadium. Good luck to it. Fury hate the channel. Why don't you suck Fury's toes like we do? Anyway, Friday, the purse bids have been changed to. Well, the end of negotiations. Exactly what the purse bid dates will be, where, where, the, where they will have to turn up in Mexico or, or wherever it may be with their envelopes. Who knows? Who knows when that's going to be? But anyway, drop your thoughts below, click thumbs up, subscribe, and I'll catch you all in the next video.